Hi, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm Wendy Wu, Director of Product Marketing at Cadence. Recently, we announced our new 112 gig long range 30s. If you ask anyone who has experience designing 30s, they will tell you designing a 112 gig 30s for long range channel is very hard. So today, I want to show you why this is such a challenging problem and the innovative solution Cadence provide. So traditionally, 30s use NRZ signaling scheme, meaning that there are two levels for signals, 0 and 1. And if you want to transmit a, a data stream such as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, the waveform would look like, some, some like something like this. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. However, starting from 56 gig 30s, um, the PAN4 signaling has been required. PAN4 signaling is a multi-level signaling. There are four levels. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. So for the same data stream, the waveform you will get with PAN4 is something like this. First, 0, 0, and then 0, 1, and then 1, 0, and then 1, 1. So as you can see, what PAN4 signaling provide is double the data rate without increasing the clock rate. And this is exactly how 25 gig 30s gets to 56 gig 30s. By changing the signaling scheme from NRZ to PAN4. So this sounds great, right? But actually PAN4 signaling is harder for the receiver to recover. Why is that? You can clearly see it when you put these two signals on a scope. On the top, this eye is an NRZ eye. And the eye is pretty open. You have two levels. And the receiver just needs to make a decision. Is this, uh, is this input lower than a certain threshold? If it is, it's a 0. If it's a higher than a certain threshold, it's a 1. However, look at the PAN4 signals. There are three eyes. So the eye opening, first of all, is only th one third of the eye opening of an NRZ eye. On top of that, imagine if you have noise on your signal, then the noise impact to the PAN4, uh, PAN4 eye will be much more profound. So this is one challenge. Let's look at the next challenge, the channel. A typical switch to server channel is like this. You have a transmitter residing in one set of ASIC. The signal goes through the pad over a certain length of PCB on the board. And then it goes through a connector to either a optical link or a copper link. On the other side of the link, the signal will need to go through another connector over another trace, PCB trace and then essentially arrive at the receive end. So this whole thing is the channel. For long range ex um, channel especially, um, there are two issues um, in, in transmitting the signal over the channel. Number one is that the signal will get attenuated over over this, this channel. So the attenuation could be as much as 35 dB, which means you, the signal amplitude will shrink by about 25x when it receive, uh, at the receive end. Another issue here is whenever the signal hits a connector, because of the impedance mismatch, there's going to be some energy gets reflected. So you will get reflections, which causes ripples on the receive signal. So how do we combat 
these challenges um, in, our, in our IP. Number one, so we in at Cadence, uh, we incorporate a ADC plus DSP architecture for our receiver that implements many tab, multiple type of FAE and DFE. So converting the signal to digital domain and then do the signal, uh, uh, digit, uh, signal processing in digital domain allows us to gain a lot of information about the channel, which gives us more margin, um, the capability of driving longer channels, and that's the benefit. Number two is that for the transmitter, we have a four type of parenthesis and a DAC-based transmitter. This allows us to provide the ultimate flexibility for the transmitter to help the receiver receive the data correctly. And then environment changes are big issues um, for this type of links because temperature and voltage is going to keep changing uh, during the operation. So in our 30s, we have SNR monitor engine that constantly monitor the link health at the receive end to say, am I still in the optimal position? Am I still in the optimal um, situation to receive the bit correctly? If not, there is automatic adaptation that's continuously ongoing to adjust the receiver to its optimal position. And the last point is that we have a firmware-based power optimizer to optimize the power for the 30s. Because when we have all these heavy equalization engine, the power is going to increase. So we need a smarter way to manage power. Based on the channel that's presented in front of 30s, we can actually um, do a better job of trade-off performance and power, and ultimately um, put the power into its ultimate, ultimate stage for its given channel. So thank you for tuning in to this Whiteboard Wednesday. If you'd like to learn more about our studies, please visit ip.cadence.com slash 112 gig. See you next time.